Hey guys, T Beavs here, and as we're waiting for the Necromancer, it looks like today Blizzard left us some Necromancer lore to read through. If you don't like reading and you'd rather just listen to somebody read it, that's what I'm here for. So, just to kill some time, here we go. Where do Necromancers come from? What is the balance? And why do they care so much about it? And when exactly did these mysterious figures first begin practicing their dark arts? Whether you've played a necromancer in Diablo 2 or are simply looking forward to playing one in Diablo 3, you might have pondered the answers to the questions above. At the same time, the lore of this class can be hard to piece together, spanning multiple books as well as conversations in the games themselves. To make it easy for you to finally get the answers you seek, and to help you get in the mood to raise the dead, we've provided a helpful summary below, so stay a while and listen. The Life of Rathma When Sanctuary was created, the demons and angels who hid there, including the leaders Anarius and Lilith, had offspring, the first of the Nephilim. The angels and demons eventually clashed over whether to spare or kill their new progeny, who had the potential to be more powerful than their progenitors. While Anarius weighed his opinions in solitude, Lilith lashed out and killed the remaining demons and angels to prevent them from harming the Nephilim. Upon returning and seeing what she had done, Anarius became outraged and banished her. Soon after, he grew wary of the Nephilim's growing power and changed the world stone to weaken them. In the years that followed, each generation of Nephilim lived shorter lives while forgetting all about their original powers and eventually becoming the humans of today's sanctuary. During this time, Anarius' son, Linarian, rebelled against his father's plans, strengthening his power while seeking those who were aligned with his goals. At some point, he also discovered the balance, the delicate interplay between the powers of order and chaos. He eventually changed his name to Rathma and began working to keep sanctuary hidden from the high heavens and limit the influence of the burning hells there. Mendelm. Many years later, Rathma sensed Lilith had returned to sanctuary and reached out to Mendelm, Undiom, to help stop her. In this way, Mendon became Rothma's first apprentice. Many events followed, with Mendon's brother, Uldusian, gaining a powerful army of followers under Lilith's guidance and changing the Worldstone's power to enhance rather than hinder the Nephilim. In the end, Lilith was again banished by Anarius, while Anarius himself was captured after the forces of the Burning Hells and High Heavens invaded Sanctuary. Upon discovering Sanctuary, the Anguirus Council of the High Heavens voted on whether to destroy it. Although the Nephilim were spared, Odysseus' followers were made to forget the events that had occurred since Lilith's reappearance. Along with the knowledge of their power, the World Stone was once more changed to inhibit the Nephilim's latent abilities. Only Mendelm, by working with Rathma, was able to remember without the angels and demons knowing what had transpired. Soon after, he was given a new name, Kalan, meaning teacher, and set out in the world to protect the balance. The Priests of Rathma In the years that followed, Mendon founded the Priests of Rathma, known to many as the Necromancers. He began to teach others his skill and impact his understanding of the balance, while recording said knowledge in the books of Kalan, these early priests established their headquarters in the jungles east of Kajistan. Once properly trained, each of the followers ventured on their own, seeking places where the balance had been disrupted and working to restore it. Each of these students would continue the tradition of finding and taking apprentices. Serving the Balance Necromancers view any challenges they face related to the balance in academic terms. While others might rush headlong into battle, necromancers are taught to control their emotions in order to better wield their dark magic. 
lest the powers they wield end up controlling their users instead. At the same time, their serious demeanor and the powers of life and death they manipulate often lead others to suspect them of having more sinister motives. The Necromancer and the Dark Wanderer When Diablo and the Prime Evils walked to Sanctuary once again, the Necromancers had to act. In the Necromancer's story in Diablo 2, the hero manages to defeat the lesser evils Andario and Durio, and eventually the greater evils Diablo, Mephisto, and Baal. In the years after, this hero would take his apprentice Metan, a familiar face for anyone who has helped him restore the balance in certain quests in Diablo 3. A star has fallen on Tristram Cathedral, and the necromancers will answer the call. You have been asked by your master to bring rest to the dead and restore the balance. What untold powers will you discover to aid you? What challenges will you face, and how will you overcome them? What new insights will you gain when you revisit parts of the campaign, especially when it comes to the matters of life and death? Your journey begins, Necromancer. To all who oppose you, beware. Well, I think those questions um, could best be answered by uh, slaying Diablo. Uh... Malthano, and probably just running a buttload of riffs. That, that's what I foresee. But All right, guys. Well, uh, thanks for listening. I hope, uh, I don't know if it's even safety time listening to this instead of reading, but it definitely freed up your eye holes listening instead of reading. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it.